So I was recently watching a YouTube video created by the YouTuber EcoFriend Leah. She's a minimalist YouTuber and she was talking about mistakes that she'd made. She was talking about being really honest with her viewers and how she had made some purchases that probably weren't the best choice. And she gave the example of yarn. She's apparently a big knitter and she was showing how she has multiple drawers and multiple baskets full of yarn. And she said how, you know, I would love to be able to say I bought all this yarn before I was pursuing minimalism, but some of this yarn I bought after I pursued minimalism. And at the time I thought I was making the right decision, but I realize now that I wasn't. But I thought that this was such a relatable example, that even if you're trying to pursue minimalism and you're trying to slow the flow of belongings into your home, it's so easy to sometimes make mistakes. And I know I personally make mistakes all the time in this way. So when I saw that from her, I thought to myself, listen, I feel you, I'm right there with you, I probably make way more mistakes than you do. And I kind of felt for her because it's a bad feeling to look at your stuff and feel a lot of regret for the decisions you've made. And I think it's important for us to be honest with ourselves and look at those thoughts before we purchase something and examine what leads us to shop unnecessarily and the types of patterns of mistakes we make when we shop in a way that doesn't work out the best for us. If you wanna find a solution to slowing down that process and to making the right decision, I have a whole video on what I call appreciation odds that is a tool that helps you make the right decision in that moment when you're shopping that really helps you pursue minimalism. I will link that at the end of this video if you wanna watch it next, so keep an eye out for that. But beyond that strategy, today what I wanna do is deconstruct the types of mistakes I tend to make where I buy something and I don't end up using it or it's not that meaningful or useful to me. The first common mistake I make is buying something out of obligation for the sake of another object. So for example, if you buy a tux, Often that means you need to buy a bow tie and cufflinks or other components of the tux. Or maybe there's some kind of home vacuum or kitchen gadget that needs multiple components or pieces to make it easier for you. Or sometimes when I'm thinking about purchasing a mug, I feel like I don't just wanna get a couple, I wanna get a whole set. One thought that often comes up for me in this category is this feeling like if I don't buy these extra pieces or things now, then I might not have the opportunity to buy them later and I might want them later because they're associated with that item. And I think that can happen all the time for many different types of belongings where we just buy something because we feel like we're almost being strategic when really we're just spending more money. There are these scripts that society creates of what we should buy because we bought something else. And I think sometimes we should slow down and question whether we really need to buy all the elements that are recommended for that thing. So maybe an example is if I buy some ground beef, I could use that to make hamburgers or I could use it to make like a taco salad or a nacho kind of salad. And then I buy hamburger buns, but then I also buy you know, shredded lettuce and tomatoes and onions and jalapenos and salsa and all that when I don't even have enough of the ground beef to go around for multiple meals. So sometimes I feel like we buy things because we bought something else and there's this sense of obligation when we should really question that and slow that process down. I know that's something I'm working on. Another mistake I've made is buying something that has a very niche purpose or is for a one-off event. Another example that I think is topical for this time of year is Halloween costumes. And it's one thing to have your kids, if you have kids, buy a Halloween costume or create one each year. But I notice even as an adult, sometimes I'll go to a party or I wanna dress up slightly for trick-or-treaters to make it a fun experience for them. And it's so easy to start to convince myself that I should have a new costume every single year which if I'm deeply inspired in the moment to create a costume out of things I already have, that makes total sense. But I think there's also a culture of people buying new costumes, like full costume sets from the store for a new one every single year. And now maybe if that is your thing, I get it, but I do think that people do it 
even when it's not that important to them. So one thing I like to do is to reuse the costumes over and over again and just be the same thing over and over again. Or make a new costume out of what I already have. And I actually remember my mom was really smart and thrifty about that when we were kids. I feel like my sister and I every year played a witch, every single year, but we loved it. And we would just go into her wardrobe and pick out longer skirts or blazers that were kind of oversized for us. And it was this super fun activity. And even though we were the same thing every year, our costumes slightly changed. And it was such a fun process of putting together the costume every year. And it just goes to show sometimes you don't need to buy a niche thing every single year. Another mistake I've made is buying an item because I can't find the one I already have. And an example of this is recently I was gonna go to an outdoor event with my husband Andy and some friends, and suddenly I realized a couple days before it was supposed to rain like all day for the event. And so I thought to myself, I should bring an umbrella to this event. And I wanted an umbrella that was compact that would fit into some kind of purse or small bag. And I didn't know off the top of my head where my compact foldable umbrella was. And so I went out and I bought a new one. And you know what ended up happening? We went to the event and it did not even rain and so I had purchased this umbrella without even needing it for the day that I had purchased it for and knowing deep down that I already had pretty much the same thing elsewhere in my home so I'm embarrassed to admit that because that happened literally last week for me but I think it's a good reminder to think about do I really need to buy this if I already have something that will do the same job Another mistake I've made is buying things due to envy. And I'm just gonna be real here. Sometimes I see a belonging or an outfit or something that someone else has and I feel envy. I wanna have it too. But I think sometimes it's helpful to realize that that's a process that happens, that sometimes I envy something and that doesn't mean I need to go out and buy it. Another mistake I've made is purchasing a genuinely lower quality version of something, the item that I really want. This has happened many times where I feel like I can't afford the fancy version of what I want, so I buy the cheap version, but the cheap version is, I know deep down, made out of materials that are not gonna last, that I don't really like, that are just not as good for whatever reason. And in that case, what I probably could have done is either A, saved up, for the dream version of the item, or if it's just too expensive, live without it. Sometimes I gotta remind myself that, that I can live without it. That's a question I've asked myself, especially when I'm purchasing that knockoff version. Can I live without this? And sometimes I'm like, you know what? I can live without this, especially the lower quality version. I don't need this. Another mistake I've made is buying something I basically already have or literally already have. And I know I mentioned the umbrella example, but sometimes it's not just because I can't find the item, it's because I just want another of the item. And I feel like this happens a lot with white t-shirts for me, as well as fall or winter boots, like little cute booties that I can wear in the winter that kind of protect my feet. I feel like I have a soft spot for that, and every year I'm tempted to buy new boots or booties. And one strategy I've been using lately is actually to say, if I'm gonna buy a new thing in the category of something I already have, I need to buy it secondhand. So if I just can't help myself and I really want a new pair of fall boots, maybe it means I need to go to the local thrift store or vintage store. Maybe it means I need to go on Poshmark, but I'm only gonna buy it if it's secondhand. And that I think is a little bit more environmentally friendly, often more affordable, easier on my pocketbook, Ultimately, the goal is to not be purchasing the same thing over and over again. A final and important type of mistake I make is buying on impulse. If I'm real with myself, quite often, the reason I'm shopping is to escape some kind of negative emotion and to feel a sense of excitement or exhilaration. That is often a motivation for why I buy things. Because if I actually paid attention to the impact that that belonging would have on my life, it's probably not much. And probably that feeling of happiness or exhilaration 
is not even worth the amount of joy it will actually bring me in the long run. But somehow buying something just makes me feel good. It helps me maybe avoid negative thoughts or negative emotions about the hard things in my life. And I'm able to just focus on this one item that I'm excited about. But realistically, that's not actually gonna make me happy. That's not gonna actually help me with the hard things in life. And ultimately that can lead to things like more debt, less opportunity for education or for travel or for other life experiences that might be more important to me. I guess that got to real talk there, but hopefully that was helpful to you in some way. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you'd give it the thumbs up. It's a great way to support the channel. You can also subscribe below for more videos on simple living, minimalism, and building an empowering mindset. I will also link at the end of this video that other video on appreciation odds, which is a strategy that really helps you clarify whether or not to buy something and helps you buy less and buy better. Anyway, thank you so much for spending this little bit of time with me, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.